Welcome to the next lecture for U.S. History, which will explore American involvement in the First World War. This lecture will address a few important themes. World War I began in 1914, but the Americans did not become involved until 1917. It will explore some of the factors which led the United States to become an active participant. Involvement in this war had a major impact on the home front, so the lecture will examine the impact of World War I on the American government, the economy, and American society. Finally, you may want to consider the impact of American involvement in this war. Do you believe the changes brought about by the First World War were positive or negative for the nation? We will first explore the battlefront associated with World War I and some of the factors which led the United States to declare war in 1917. There were a variety of long and short-term causes of World War I. Among others, they include the rapid rise of Germany and Italy, which upset the balance of power in Europe, imperialism, an arms race, the alliance system, and nationalism. The spark which started the war was the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary. For additional information as to the causes of World War I, you may click on one or both of the hyperlinks below. Fighting began in 1914, and a major set of alliances pitted two sets of powers against another. The Allied powers were led by Great Britain, France, and Russia. The Central powers were led by Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Turkey. This map provides a visual aid for the two major military coalitions with World War I. The yellow nations identify the Allied powers. The green identify the Central powers. The President of the United States in 1914 was Woodrow Wilson, and he called upon Americans to be neutral in thought as well as in action. And many Americans wanted to remain neutral, as shown by this popular song from 1915. However, the United States had very strong economic ties to Great Britain, as well as a common language, ancestry, and culture. There were two major events which eventually led the United States to become involved in the war and fight against the Central Powers. These include German submarine warfare and the Zimmerman Telegram. Germany's policy of unrestricted submarine warfare was one factor which led to American involvement in the war. Shortly after the war began, Germany declared that the British Isles were a war zone. Any ships entering this zone could be subject to attack. Americans were opposed to this because U.S. trade with the British was quite heavy and the United States saw this as a violation of the rights of neutral nations. Events surrounding the British passenger liner, the Lusitania, increased tension between the Americans and Germans. In the days before its voyage from New York to the British Isles, the German embassy carried a series of warnings discouraging Americans from taking part in this voyage. About a week into its voyage, the Lusitania was attacked and about 1,200 people died, including 128 Americans. The American people were furious, and as a result, Germany pledged to stop its submarine warfare. However, tension increased between the United States and Germany as a result of this incident. The second factor that led to American involvement in the war was the Zimmerman Telegram. 
The Zimmermann telegram was a message from the German foreign minister, Alfred Zimmermann, to the Mexican government, and it offered a plan to Mexico. First of all, it called upon Mexico to attack the United States. Secondly, Germany would become involved in this fight and help Mexico defeat the Americans. The reason why Mexico should do this is the third factor here. Mexico would be able to recapture land previously lost to the United States if they undertook this proposal. Why would Germany make this proposal? Well, essentially, they were undertaking a gamble. Germany decided to resume their submarine warfare in 1917, and they figured that if Mexico kept the United States occupied and the U.S. was not able to put up much of a front in Europe in the fighting in World War I, they might just prevail. Well, as a result of the resumption of the submarine warfare and the discovery of the Zimmerman telegram, the United States declared war in 1917. So, in 1917, the United States joined the Allies and became an active participant in the fight against the Central Powers. I would like to briefly discuss some of the contributions the Americans made to the war in Europe. The United States contributed to the war effort in a variety of ways. About two million American soldiers traveled to Europe under the leadership of General John Pershing. Those American troops saw combat in a variety of areas of France as they helped to stop several German attacks. Americans provided an emotional lift for soldiers who had been fighting for several years, and American supplies helped the Allied effort. Fighting ended on November 11, 1918, when the ceasefire went into effect. Now I'd like to talk about the impact of World War I on the American home front. One of the things that we see is that the size and power of the national government grew. On the eve of World War I, the United States had a standing army of about 120,000, which was far too small to fight a war in Europe. So, Congress passed the Selective Service Act, or the draft, in May of 1917. First of all, all males 18 to 45 became eligible for the draft. A lottery system would determine if someone had to serve or not. One interesting characteristic was that about 20% of all drafted were born outside of the United States, demonstrating the United States remained a country of immigrants. Building on this theme of the United States as a nation of immigrants, we see a poster from the Cleveland Board of Education printed in 1917. This was designed to encourage immigrants to become Americanized and learn, quote, the language of America as well as citizenship. This was originally printed in six different languages. Very often, registration for the draft was turned into a festive occasion as seen by these images here. On the right, we see a parade for war recruits in Denver. On the left, we see a popular new song. Another example in the growth and size of the American government during World War I were seen by the steps undertaken to pay for the cost of the war. The cost of the war is estimated to be about $35 billion. William McAdoo was put in charge of raising the funds as he held the position of Secretary of Treasury. Funds were primarily raised in two ways. First of all, income tax rates were raised for all Americans. Secondly, the government borrowed the funds from the American people by selling war bonds. On the left we see an image of a poster encouraging people to purchase war bonds and to show their patriotism and support for the war. Famous individuals like the movie actor Douglas Fairbanks were present at rallies like this one to encourage people to purchase war bonds. One final example of a government agency demonstrating the growth and the power of the national government would be the Committee for Public Information established in 1917. This was headed by George Creel, and the agency was designed to promote support for American involvement in the war. We see a poster sponsored by the Committee for Public Information on the left. I thought I would highlight a few other additional posters promoting American involvement in World War I. What's interesting here is the way that women are portrayed in the posters. 
everyone can contribute to the war effort even if they're not a soldier. The economy of the United States was also impacted by American involvement in the war. In two words, the United States experienced an economic boom during the First World War. Some statistics dealing with manufacturing and wages back up that fact. On the right, we see a poster from the Fuel Administration. Again, the United States was a nation of immigrants, as seen with this poster being printed in more than one language. I think these statistics demonstrate that it wasn't just the manufacturing sector of the American economy which prospered during World War I. The price of corn and cotton doubled. This encouraged many farmers to purchase more land, and some even took out loans in order to increase their production in order to reap the wartime profits. Next, we'll explore the impact of World War I on American society. One area where we see American society impacted would be race relations. We see the first so-called Great Migration of African Americans to northern cities like Chicago, Detroit, and New York as about a half a million blacks moved north in search of jobs. In some cases, this influx of African Americans into northern cities led to racial violence. This is best seen in events which took place in East St. Louis, Illinois. Race riots developed there when white mobs torched the homes of several black residents. As people fled their homes in flames, some were shot. In the end, over 300 buildings were destroyed, as well as at least 39 blacks and 9 whites who lay dead. Women's roles were also impacted by American involvement in the war. About 11,000 women served in the Navy overseas during the war, and we see an additional one million women working in industry as they moved from one job to another and earned higher wages during the war. On the right, we see a poster encouraging women to enter the workforce. There were relatively few women working in the railroads before World War I, but as we see from this photograph, we've got a series of women who worked on the Union Pacific Railroad. Often what typically happened was that women went from one job to another in order to obtain higher wages during the war. American society was also characterized by a tremendous amount of patriotism and volunteerism. This is seen in a variety of actions promoted by Herbert Hoover, who was the head of the Food Administration. During World War I, food wasn't rationed. However, the government used a variety of different slogans to encourage people to conserve resources and cut down on certain food items. They had things like meatless Mondays and wheatless Wednesdays, and they also encouraged people to serve beans by all means instead of meat products. This World War I poster of a woman draped in an American flag showed that women could sow the seeds of victory by planting their own victory gardens, because every garden is a munitions plant, and if you didn't know how to do it, you could write to the government, and they could give you a free book on how to garden and can and preserve your vegetables throughout the year. In some cases, that patriotism could turn ugly as we see a variety of examples of anti-German hysteria. Americans seem to begin to fear all things German, like German food, and so Americans stopped eating sauerkraut during the war, and instead they replaced it with Liberty cabbage. They didn't have hamburgers during the war, and instead they ate Liberty sandwiches. Some towns with German names had them changed because we were fighting a war against Germany, and the German language was abandoned in some states' public schools. There was also violence against some German Americans, as seen when a mob lynched a German-born man in Collinsville, Illinois. A jury later exonerated the leaders of that mob.
One additional area where we see some anti-German hysteria deals with prohibition of alcohol. Support for prohibition had been around for several decades, however it received a final push during the war itself. Promoters of prohibition pointed out the names of many brewers, like Pabst, Schlitz, Anheuser-Busch, and they argued that alcohol was a German attempt to undermine American morality. Well, the 18th Amendment prohibiting alcohol was passed by Congress in 1917, and it went into effect in 1920 following the support of enough states. Now that we've addressed several characteristics associated with American involvement in the First World War, we can review some of the main ideas raised in this lecture. Well, today I've talked about American involvement in World War I. The war itself began in 1914, but the United States, following a period of neutrality, didn't become involved until 1917. The war had a major impact on the home front in the United States. One thing that you might want to keep in mind, do you think those changes were positive? or negative for the country. Well, I hope you learned more about World War I and American involvement in the war today. The next few slides will provide additional hyperlinks to more information in case you're interested.